out here on the right side. The Air Force has finally arrived with the C-141B Starlifter. This aircraft is built by Lockheed Aircraft. It's from the 514th Air Mobility Wing based in New Jersey's McGuire Air Force Base. Now let's see if he's coming by in a dirty configuration, and w when I say dirty, I don't mean all that smoke out behind the airplanes. I mean, he may have the gear extended, which I don't believe he does. Now the gear is in those pots along the fuselage of this, and just forward of the leading edge of the wing where they attach to the fuselage is where they put that 12-foot long plug in the fuselage to extend the fuselage of the aircraft. Uh, currently, all the C-141s flying have had this modification done to them. And it has the same overall effect as increasing the number of aircraft by 30%. Now, the C-141A was built between 1963 and 1967, and it was Air Mobility Command's first jet aircraft designed to meet military standards as a troop and cargo carrier. The development of the B model, which we see flying here today, was the most cost-effective method of increasing air mobility command airlift capability. Now, this aircraft is also used as a parachute dropping aircraft for airborne troops, although I don't know as I'd want to jump out of a jet aircraft. Facing seats or sidewall canvas seats for passengers quickly and easily to handle over 30 different missions. It was the first jet transport from which U.S. Army paratroopers jumped and the first to land in the Antarctic. The C-141 established a world record for heavy cargo drops of 70,195 pounds. They're stationed at McCord Air Force Base in Washington, McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey, and Travis Air Force Base in California. Air Mobility Command began transferring C-141s to the Air Reserve in the Air National Guard Forces in July of 1986. First Air Force unit, reserve unit, to obtain the C-141 was Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, followed by others now at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, March Air Force Base, California, and Air National Guard units at Jackson, Mississippi, and Memphis, Tennessee. And if you look out here on the left side, the aircraft is in what is called the dirty configuration. These low, slow flaps are extended, the gear is extended, and he's in a very critical landing mode. Now, above the cockpit area of the aircraft, there's a hump in the fuselage. And this is the receptacle for the probe method, or the flying boom, I should say, refueling receptacle. It's in the top part of the fuselage, just to the rear of the crew compartment. The Air Force Reserve Command supports the Air Force mission to defend the United States through control and exploitation of air and space by providing global reach and global power. The Air Force Reserve Command plays an integral role in the day-to-day -day Air Force mission and is not a force held in reserve for possible war contingency operations.